Hi, welcome to Cigar Time. This is actually the absolute last cigar time of the year. It's New Year's Eve. It is New Year's Eve. Yeah. Yes. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Happy New Year's Eve. Year's Eve. Year's Eve. All right. Um, <laughs> we are here to talk cigars and all of everything related, and we've got some special guests today, but I'll start with Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. Good evening, everybody. And to his right is Paul. I'm also not a special guest. Um, You're special, but maybe not a guest. Hello, everybody. And of course, we have Adam Shepard from Ventura Cigar, our special panelist today. Thank you for having me. And of course, as always, the lovely Tia. Hi. All right. Um, as is our new tradition, we're opening the cigar or opening the, the show with a cigar. This is the Estilo Cubano, which Adam has uh, generously contributed to the show. Why don't you tell us about this? Well, it's a medium-bodied uh, Honduran. Uh, it's part of Ventura Cigar Company, and I'm the the rep for this area. Uh, and uh, of course, these are some of my favorite clients here. Some of them. Except for Rob. Except for me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, anyway, it's, it's a medium-bodied Dominican, excuse me, Honduran, uh, made by Nesta Placencia, medium-bodied uh, Nicaraguan wrapper, Honduran filler with a little bit of Costa Rican. It's got some nice chocolate notes to the cigar, a little bit of spice, and some sweetness also from the Costa Rican. Uh, it's been a good seller here at, at Cigar Cigars. Yeah. Uh, it's available at all of the stores, uh, and uh, obviously at Ventura Cigar, we're very, very thankful and grateful for the support you all have given us with the cigar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Great all cigar. Right. Thank you. All right. So what do, uh, we've been smoking this uh, offset. What do you guys think about it? I think it's a great cigar. I'm probably why I like it so much is because it has the Honduran filler. I'm uh -huh. really big on Honduran tobacco. Um, it's a short smoke, but it's it's really tasty. I'm surprised. I wasn't sure I was going to like it, and I do. This is a new size, Adam. What's it, what's it called? This is, yeah. this is a new size, and it's one that you all actually don't carry. We launched it at IPCPR. Uh, it's called the uh, La Bala Trumpet. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's, um, but we have a full complement of sizes. We have a, a Robusto, uh, which received a 90 in Cigar Aficionado last summer. Mm -hmm. We have the, the, the obligatory 6x60. Uh, which is called the uh, Toro Gordo, smokes beautifully. Um, there's a there's a standard Toro, and uh, another one called the Matador that's kind of in between the Toro and the mm -hmm. uh, and the Toro Gordo. So, the full complement of sizes okay. for everyone out there. But this is a new guy here. Okay, Paul, what do you think? Starting with me. Well, I started with Tia. <laughs> I started with Tia. Wow. He didn't even hear me. I know. It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wow. Okay. Catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <coughs> historically, I have not been a huge fan of this cigar, but I like this size, and for some reason, the way the flavor plays out in this size, I mm -hmm. like very much. Good. I like the size. Yeah. Hey, it's Scott. It's interesting. <laughs> I like the cigar. I like the. You said, what was you said? It was a Nicaraguan. It's wrapper. a Nicaraguan wrapper with a Honduran filler, a little touch of Costa Rican in there as I, well. I like the cigar. It's it's. Yeah. Uh, it's got some nice flavors. It's a medium body, like you said. A little bit of spice. Um, this is a, this is a new size for me. I haven't seen this one before. Yeah, yeah. Is it, I've, I've, what maybe is this a new size for the for you all? It, or it's a new size for, for the entire line. Okay. And and I should tell you, it's also at a great price point as well. Yes, I, I think I think you're looking at between five thirty five and seven dollars somewhere yeah. in there. And most of these stills are are they're they're not hardly expensive cigars, no. right. but they're and, fantastic. And, sure. and as you know, uh, I'm sure you all know. Well, my, maybe Paul doesn't. Uh, but uh, no it's uh, it's it's made it's blended by Nesta Placencia, uh, and Placencia is the largest tobacco grower in Central America. It's six thousand employees working as farms and as factories. Wow. And uh, even if you are not, uh, even if it's not blended uh, by his uh, in his factory, if it's a Nicaraguan cigar, chances are very good that there's some Placencia tobacco in that cigar. He actually, uh, he actually grows more tobacco than the entire country of Cuba. Oh, I'm sure really? it does, yeah. yeah. Yep. No kidding. That's a lot. Wow, that's a lot of tobacco. It's more than I grow. <laughs> if if you like ever went there. into his fermentation barns, you'd be flabbergasted. They're endless. Really? Piles and piles wow. and piles. Cool. Endless. Very neat. That's a trip. All right. Well, Tay, do you want to leave us off? New Year's Eve. What do you think so, about this one? Um, like I said, uh, <clears throat> great cigar. The band is... Very cute, very different. Well, the band. Um, the but band. it's a really good cigar. Am I rating it yet? Or We're just rating it. The rating, I'm going to give this uh, 4.25. Right. Oh, and we should clarify for... Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Out of that's six. not out of a hundred, no. isn't it? No, no it's, it's out of one to five. It's one to five. One to five cigars. Okay. And by the way, I noticed you said that the band is cute. What do you think about the sales rep for the company? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Shameless plug. So you wow. came on here to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, it's never too it's not too late to Are for that you? New Year's Eve day, Oh, know. okay. Uh, I give it a solid four. Wait, he didn't read it. It's his cigar. It's, it's my five. cigar. Read I'm it, giving it, a, it, I'm it. giving it a six out of five. <laughs> oh my God. Gee, there's a shock. <laughs> Rob. Uh, I wanna have to bring this uh, this rating down. I don't like this cigar at all. Wow. And Adam knows that he never gives me one of these cigars. <laughs> um, I give it a two seven five. That's the Ooh. lowest we've ever Shut had. The front door. That yeah. is the lowest we've ever had. Shocking. Oh my, should I not say I, that? I don't like the cigar. What do you want me to do? Well, I'll give it a four. I'm going to bring it right back up. Thank uh, you. I enjoy this cigar. I do too. And I like the way it draws. It's tw twisting the pigtail off. I particularly like it the really size. has a really nice draw to it. Rob, it's you should really like the size. It won't last as long for you. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's why I smoked it. <laughs> well, it's All good right. to know that four out of the five people on the panel have taste. There you go. Yeah. That's true. There you go. Tia, what's our next cigar? Our next cigar is going to be the Rocky Patel 2003 Cameroon, which is actually the newest to their line that they have of their vintage series. The wrapper is a Cameroon, the binder is a Nicaraguan, and the filler is a Dominican and Nicaraguan. So while she's going to punch me and light me, a quick set of sizes. <laughs> it's a Churchill, a Gordo, a Robusto, a so Toro, and a Torpedo. <laughs> be right back. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. Now a word from our lighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, while we're doing this, Adam, tell us what's going on with Ventura. Well, we've got a lot of a lot of exciting new things happening with the line, with the company. And for those of you who don't know who we are, um, we've been about, thank you so much. We've, we're about two years old. We started out with two lines, the Pure Sangre and the, uh, and the Estilo Cubano. Um, both which are carried here at Cigar Cigars. Pure Sangre is a fantastic That's a very, Nicaraguan very Puro. I that's, love that cigar. That's actually Nestor Placencia's personal daily cigar. Is it? And we just, um, we uh, begged him to put the band on it and make it part of our line. And so that's Good. how it came to be. The other thing that's coming down the pike, well actually it's already in stores, uh, is the Project 805. Tremendous reviews on this cigar. It's made for us by La Aurora. Uh, it's, uh, it has a tobacco called Andullo, which has never been used in a cigar before. Uh, and the tobacco, if you have a moment, I'll tell you a little bit about Andullo. Absolutely. Andullo, Andullo is grown uh, in the Dominican Republic. Uh, it has been for about 500 years. When they cure the tobacco, they, grow, they cure it in these big palm leaf husks that are about six feet tall. And they, uh, at, for two years, it comes out, it is a big, black, hard as a rock log of tobacco. Mm -hmm. And for centuries, uh, native Dominicans have carved pipes out of it and then smoked the tobacco in the pipe. Oh, and uh, one of the blenders down at La Aurora knew about the tobacco, started playing around with it in blends. When we approached uh, La Aurora about this partnership, uh, we said, we want you to do a cigar for us. You're the oldest Dominican cigar maker, right. and we want you to do something that's new and different to the market. And they came up with the 805, came up with that blend, and you all have just ordered it this we week. Did. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, in fact, it's so popular, right now you all are actually back, are going to be back ordered on oh, one of the sizes, much. because it's sold out. Really? Wow. We've, we've, we've had three shipments since the trade show in late July and all three have sold out. Wow. That's how popular That's the good. cigar has That's become. Excellent. That's excellent. Yeah. And uh, it's medium body. It's got a little bit of spice up front, I think. And there's some sweetness from the Andullo as well. Nice sweet undertone. It's, it's really doing well for us. We're really excited about it. Good. Yeah, I've had that. Nice. I, we've, I think we've yeah, all we, had that. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's I, I really, really, yeah. really enjoyed that cigar. Yeah. I'll go back to the uh, taste profile on the Rocky Patel real quick. It has notes of cedar, black pepper, coffee, and a caramel-like sweetness to it. Did you give the sizes? Yes, I did. I gave did the you? sizes. Yeah. Wow, I missed that. You did. Must have been sleeping. You, you were. Uh, no, you were getting your cigar from the girls, okay. from the babes. You, you were distracted. <laughs> was distracted. You were distracted. Okay. Well, as seeing as we're smoking a cigar with a Cameron wrapper, oh, all is going to be. Uh, are you? Are you in the factory or field today? I guess I'm in the field. Okay. We, we're talking about growing <laughs> tobacco, and specifically, we're talking about Cameroon wrappers. Yes. 
And I want to give you a little history on it because Cameroon is, it, it's an unusual tobacco. Does anybody here like Cameroon wrapper? <laughs> That's a good question. I, th <laughs> I think there's at least one person who might call it his favorite wrapper. Absolutely. He just may. Mm hmm? He just may. I just he may. just might. So, for those of you that don't know, Cameroon is a country in Africa. Uh, it sits basically between Nigeria and the Congo on the west coast right on the water. Uh, it's a very hilly country, and all of the rivers and valleys are at a high elevation there mm -hmm. as well. Uh, although tobacco was in Cameroon for a long time, it wasn't until right after World War II that the French government, who was then in control of Cameroon, uh, decided that because it was, uh, in terms of the soil, more like Cuba than anywhere else outside of Central America. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to try, the government of, of France wanted to try to propagate tobacco there. Okay. Uh, they actually brought a particular seed from Indonesia uh, and planted it there and it started to do very well. And because the French tobacco monopoly, which was controlled by the government, was promoting this all over the world, uh, Cameroon tobacco became very, very popular. Now, can I ask a question? Is the seed, it, what, is it just an Indonesian seed or is it like, you know, a, a Pabano grown or a Corojo grown in Cameroon or just no, a completely it's, different breed? It's, it is an Indonesian seed that has evolved somewhat in the time that they've been growing it okay. in Africa. <clears throat> There was one fundamental problem, and that was, and this is sort of a business thing, but the French government decided that they wanted to only sell this tobacco in blind auction, which meant if you wanted the tobacco, you would go to the auction, you didn't get to look at it, you didn't get to pick which parts of it you wanted or which lot you wanted, you just had a bid and you got what you got. Um, and that created a tremendous problem with manufacturers that were using it that felt somebody else was getting all of the best Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the French government <coughs> could control who got what, but the people actually buying it couldn't control who got what. Typical French. Duh. Here Typical. we go. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, at the same time, the prices started going up yeah. dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, by the late 1970s, early 1980s, uh, people stopped using Cameroon wrapper almost altogether. Mm -hmm. It basically died as a, as a wrapper type. Because it was so expensive? Because it was so expensive and because the quality that you would get when you purchased it for your factory was totally unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, with, uh, lost my train of thought there. <laughs> what happened was a, a, uh, a Dutch tobacco entrepreneur came back into Cameroon and decided that the tobacco, if it was managed properly and sold properly, could be exceptionally good. Mm -hmm. um, but because of the hills and valleys, uh, it's almost like hillbilly country, the African hey. version, it's yeah. almost the African He's from version Tennessee, of, so, yeah. well, so. so you should understand this. <laughs> Down in the hollers, uh, no. uh, there was, there's no place for large plantations to grow tobacco. So what they did, what this guy did, his name is Richard Mirapple, and what he Say that did. Three times. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because it's apple, and he was like the Johnny Appleseed oh, of Cameroon. He okay. traveled all over Cameroon with seeds convincing little local farmers with farms sometimes as small as one acre mm -hmm. to grow this seed. And then he would go back around and buy up the crop and sort it and decide who was going to get what and how uh -huh. it was going to work. And it wasn't blind auction anymore. Right. So all of a sudden, Cameroon was back. Okay. Uh, there are many different kinds of Cameroon in terms of how strong it's going to be, how intense the spice is. Typically, People think of Cameroon as almost flavor neutral. You can blend Cameroon what? with almost anything, and it's going to taste good, no matter what you put it I'm on. I'll go with that. 
It's a it's typically a pretty mild wrapper, which is why they consider it neutral for okay. for blending purposes. But the single most defined characteristic of Cameroon is a light white pepper spice. Yeah. And that's the story of Cameroon. Now, There's not a lot else to say about it. They've tried mm -hmm. to grow it elsewhere in the uh, world. That was my, that was my mm -hmm. next question. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Before the show today, I was looking on the internet to see if anybody anywhere had ever succeeded in growing Cameroon outside of Cameroon. And it said on the internet that it had been tried in many places and the only place where it was successful was one small plantation in Ecuador owned by a company called Piros de Armando Ramos. Okay, really? who's that? So That's my company. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so, I, so, so did you? And it was in Ecuador? Yeah, yeah, no we kidding. did. It took us eight years to breed Cameroon that would grow properly in Ecuador, mm -hmm. that would have that white pepper spice to it, but our goal in growing it there was to make a thicker leaf Mm -hmm. that, because Cameroon tends to be very fragile. Right, very fragile. Is that one of the things that causes the, the price to be so high? Because I understand there's a pretty low yield on the tobacco. There is a low yield, and it gets easily damaged, it's even it's before hard to fermentation. It's, hard it's to just work hard with, to yeah. work with, it's, so it's the waste pretty factor brittle. is high. It's a pretty yeah. brittle leaf. It's fragile, yeah. 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 CAO, yeah. CAO tried to come out with a double Cameroon wrapper. It tasted very good, but once you started to smoke the cigar, the heat just cracked the wrapper. So they had to discontinue the cigar. Because the inside would yeah. swell yeah. and the, yeah. the wrapper couldn't CX2? stretch to a yeah. yeah. Didn't know that. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. Do they use, and pardon me for not knowing this, I should know this as a rep, and maybe you said this already, do they use Cameroon as filler tobacco at all? Some do. Some it's some it's do. Pretty, okay. Sometimes? It's pretty rare. It's rare. Sometimes people will throw it in a blend just to, to add that little little hint of spice. Yeah. Some use it as binder, too, which mm -hmm. I, was, I found surprising yeah. because it's so thin and fragile. Yeah. Mm. It, it, it's rarely used as a binder. And again, they'll use it as a binder really only because of the flavor. And even today, Cameroon wrapper tends to be pretty expensive mm -hmm. as, as wrappers go. So there's a good amount of it that isn't pretty enough to be used as a wrapper. Mm -hmm. And then it's perfect for a binder because right. it's going to be yeah. less expensive, but it's still going to impart that flavor for right. the cigar. When you grew yours in Ecuador, does it have? It didn't look the same as the Cameroon from Cameroon. No, and that was on purpose. Okay. We, we were looking for two things. We wanted it to be thicker, right. so it would be easier to work with, and we wanted it to be oilier, okay. so that the flavor would be richer. Right. We didn't, I mean, uh, this was, isn't. Excuse me, if it was oilier, it wouldn't crack then, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be so brittle? It wouldn't brittle. be brittle. Um, we didn't do this by genetic engineering. We did it in the oldest old-fashioned agricultural method. We planted a crop, we picked the plants that had the thickest leaves on it, mm -hmm. and we only took seeds from those. Got rid of the crop, planted the seeds from that, and just kept doing that for eight years okay. until we had the wow. leaf that was That's thicker. commitment right there, man. Wow, yeah, eight <laughs> so years, yeah, commitment. absolutely. Holy cow. What's ironic, or at least to me as a, as a leaf person, mm, what's ironic you. is the original seed that was grown in Cameroon was an Indonesian Sumatra. Mm -hmm. And they, they grew that in Cameroon, and when Thank they you. decided to start growing tobacco in Ecuador, they took an Indonesian Sumatra mm -hmm. and a Cameroon mm -hmm. and crossbred them to create the original Ecuadorian Sumatra. I used to talk about that a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, I did. Very interesting. It is interesting. All right. Well, now we know all about Cameroon. Yeah. What do we think about this Cameroon wrapped cigar? Um, I think this is a great cigar um, with their vintage line. Personally, I like the 99, the 92s a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, the the wrapper on those, that would be a Maduro wrapper on which on the vintage on the 99 one's and the Nicaragua, 92. One's Nicaragua, one's Ecuadorian, I think. Yeah. But but the and, but the color the, of the wrapper, it's like a dark. Is a, is a is a Connecticut Connecticut wrapper. Yeah. yeah. So I'm talking but, about 90 and 92. Yeah, but, but the I'm, other ones aren't Maduro. They're very dark. They're very but they're dark. Not, but they're, they're not Maduro. Oh, okay. They are. They're all Connecticut. No, they're not Connecticut. No, one's Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian. one's Nicaragua. Oh, yeah. okay. Because it looks. I mean, because the darkness of the vintage in the '99 and the '92 look really dark. So I always thought it was like some type of Maduro. Maybe. But um, like I said, I like the '92 and the '99 better. But I really this is a good one. I mean, it's a Cameroon wrapper. 
You know, what can you say? So right. it's good. And the band's beautiful. It's very, it's very simple. It's classic. It's very lovely. You're right. It's lovely. It's Adam, blue. Look, look at it. Oh, I think it's a very fine cigar. Mm -hmm. It's, it's got a nice little bit of pepper note to it. Some cedar, as as Tia said earlier, and uh, I think in a way it kind of reminds me of those classic Partagas. Uh, yeah, the original. Yeah, yeah the, the, the Dominican Partagas. Yeah, you know, I think, very much I so. think that I think that Rocky Patel got the blend, got the wrapper. You know, mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. got it down pretty good. Good. Plus, I like the wrap a lot. Mark's a good guy. Mark's, yeah. a, good, Mark's a good guy, yeah. <laughs> That's a shout out to Mark. He owes me dinner now. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Like to happen. All right, Paul, what do you think? I like this cigar a lot. There are <coughs> maybe some more expensive and better Cameroons out there, but I think this is a mm -hmm. really clean expression of what Cameroon ought to be like. Right. Yeah. There's enough in the filler blend to make it interesting, but, you re but not so strong that you lose the sort of delicate flavor that Cameroon imparts. So I, I think he did an excellent job with it. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, Cameroon is my favorite rapper. Mm. These guys tell, yeah. <laughs> tell me, as they keep telling me all the time. Um, I love the taste. It's got a very nice spice to it. Uh, you can definitely taste the white pepper. Um, it is the quintessential Cameroon, in my opinion. Um, I love that. It, it's very good. It, and Adam is right. It does taste like the, uh, the old Partagas. Um, it's also Cameroon. It's also Cameroon. Yeah, it's it's very good cigar. Yeah, I have to agree with everybody. Um, I I real this is one of my favorite Rocky Patel cigars. Yeah. Um, it mm -hmm. it may actually be my favorite Rocky Patel. I like the Old World Reserve, but okay. Yeah. Uh, and I am. It may not. I don't know if it's my favorite wrapper, but I love the Cameroon wrapper as well. Um, I love the oil in the Cameroon wrapper. Um, I definitely get that white. Uh, pepper spice yeah, from it, um, and I also I always from Cameron wrappers. <sighs> steve the guy. You just steved. From the Cameron wrappers, I often get a, like a kind of a sweet spice, almost a nutmeg from it. Um, but I, I enjoy the cigar. You, you a lot. can taste the caramel. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe not nutmeg, the caramel. But yeah, yeah. Okay, time to rate. Four, four point two five. Just right at it, huh? Right, yeah, four point yeah. two five. All right. Well, as I, th I think it's a rep from a different company. It's, it's probably okay. not right for me to write. You should express your opinion. Absolutely. It's your We're opinion. family here. I'm going to give it a 4.75. Wow. 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 <laughs> wow, that's very nice. I'll give it a 4.5. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's a 4.75. I agree with Adam. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite cigars in the store. And how often does a Redskins fan and an Eagles fan agree? Never. On anything. Never. Never. <laughs> you a Redskins fan? I thought you were a Chiefs fan. Burgundy and gold. Too. Uh, he wore, okay. he wore a, a, an Eagles hat today. I did wear He's an Eagles hat fan. today because my boss, who's a Philly native, uh, is a big Eagles fan, so I took a picture of me wearing the Eagles hat. It's, oh, you brown It's neighbor. atonement for losing, for on, losing Sunday. on Sunday. Yeah. I owe him two dinners <laughs> nice. as well. Uh, I'll, I'll give this a 4.5 also, which is kind of scary because I agree with everybody. Wow, that's true. We never yeah, agree. I know. Very rarely. Speaking of Especially scary. Especially with Tia. Speaking of <laughs> scary. Speaking of <laughs> scary. Your favorite scary movie? Oh, scary! Favorite scary movie? Actually, I have three of them. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, The Exorcist. Oh, yeah. why oh, did you no, take mine? No, really? No, the Exorcist is the I, I, scariest classic, movie ever yeah. made. I can't. I will not watch it. Absolutely, the scariest movie. ever Demonology made. freaks me out. We yeah. agree. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Well, you got to come up with a new one. Yeah, you have to come up with a new one. I don't know. Paranormal was okay. That's, that's a good. That's yeah, actually that, pretty good. Because that that's good. that can happen. Yeah. So. Okay. Well. Well, I want to say Psycho. Psycho is very good. Because Psycho, Psycho was scary, but actually the movie that scared me more than any other movie I ever saw was a Clint Eastwood movie. <laughs> Play Misty any, any which way you can? No, yeah, yeah that, the gorilla was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, or the baboon or whatever it was. No, uh, I thought Misty. you were about to say a speech at the convention this <laughs> well, year. Well, that, that was hard. <laughs> Never mind. Um, Play Misty for me. Really? And the only thing that was scary about it was, you know, that woman that was in love with him became a complete psycho and oh, one yeah. day jumped out of the closet and attacked his maid and cut her up with a razor. Mm -hmm. And I was so shocked by that, it, it just scared the crap out of me. That I can, can see that. too. Adam? Uh, is, it, is, is this favorite scary movie or what I think is the scariest Scar movie? Scariest, scariest. movie. Hmm. I like The Shining a lot. Shining is Ooh, that's, that's, one of mine that's, too. That's excellent. That, yeah, that or Young Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> that's scary for the whole other reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, The Shining's awesome. That's, that's that was one of my other three. Yeah, that's that's an incredible movie. movie. Nicholson's great. He's over the top. It's yeah. a fantastic Absolutely. movie. Absolutely. Good book from my understanding. You know which one? I just thought of the Alfred Hitchcock Birds. 
That bird was yeah. that was scary because that could happen. Yeah. Now just imagine birds trying that to attack. That actually did you. happen. Did it really? Yeah. Think, uh, yeah that's he, a, that's, that's, that did yeah. happen. Oh my yeah. god. Ooh. Mine's Cape Fear. That's scary. Cape Fear. The original uh, or the remake? Uh, the remake. I thought was uh, it just scared the living bejesus out of me. Yeah. yeah. Rob, Robert De Niro was pretty. He terrifying. was fantastic. That that scene where he's laughing with the cigar in the theater. Yeah, in the theater. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> but what scared me so much is that he hit. He held. He, Held himself under the car for I don't know 100 miles, whatever. Yeah, scared the crap out of me, man. It really <laughs> did. But Mitchum was awfully good in the first one. Yes, yes he was. The first one was good, yeah. but I don't That's know a heck if it was of a movie. scary. Yeah, my so. my third one was uh, Halloween, the original Halloween movie. The first one, yeah. The first one, yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm-hmm. That was yes, really scary. That was too. scary. Yeah, it was. That All was right. scary. Yeah, so. Cool. And then the twentieth one was scary. That was. <laughs> that was the 20th anniversary. Yeah, well, the twentieth anniversary. anniversary. That was hilarious. It was scary but hilarious. Step cousin like of Rocky. Chucky. Yeah, it's not like Rocky. They you know, just keep making twenty Rocky movies. Oh man. What did I say? The twentieth Halloween yeah, movie. Yeah. Okay. And Jaws. Jaws was Jaws pretty scary. Was. Yeah. Yeah. Jaws was. I saw scary. the theater. I was pretty scary when I was a kid. Did you man. go in the water after that? I no. did because I don't care. Sorry for water for some of you. Yeah, I, I did, but it was that was a scary movie. You're right. Down at Wildwood, yeah. they had a scare with the uh, sharks. I remember I was actually down there. I was little. I remember my aunt picking us, picking me up out of the water and running us, you know, to the beach because it was a shark scare. Hmm. So, yeah. Wow. I was Wildwood. scared we weren't going to get the sharks. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's that's the, a different kind of shark scare. Here's the opposite of scary. Um, we have a question from one of our customers. Okay. Is it funny? That could be scary all of itself. No, no, no. no. This terrifying. is Craig from Westchester. This is the opposite. He said he got a whole bunch of cigars at Christmas, and he was told to put them in the refrigerator to keep them fresh. Mm. What? Oh, oh, yeah. Who told him that? He wants to know if that's what he should do. I don't know who told him. Well, who's going to take that one? I can. I think anybody can. <laughs> well, yeah, I can. I can. The the simple uh, answer is the. It's got to be quick. Historical reason that people put cigars. They didn't put them in refrigerators. They put them in ice boxes. And back in the day when there was no air conditioning and your house could be very hot in the summertime and the ice box was sealed, it was moist, and it was cool, that was a great place to put a cigar. Right, but that was... That was a long time ago. Yeah, now the, the refrigerants take the humidity out. Well, a frost-free refrigerator is exactly. all about taking all of the humidity out. Yeah. Right. So the last place you want to put a exactly. cigar is in a fridge. Yeah. Yeah. If, you turn the, if we turn the uh, air conditioning on in the humidors, the, the humidity, oh, yeah. the humidity it just sucks it out. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Cool. The, the other thing that, to keep in mind about putting them in the refrigerator is tobacco is extremely absorbent so if you put if you if you put your cigars in there with your pizza hut from the night before yeah it's going to taste like onions and peppers and anchovies the but next I day about that, but that could be so can i put it with the bacon you can yeah, put it with it, your yeah. bacon yeah bacon you know cigar. We're, we're out of time yes we are oh wow so we're gonna wow. say bye-bye so it's time to run off to a new year's eve party it yes is. it yeah. is yeah. absolutely Go party yeah. all right bye for this year bye-bye yeah. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. I no, sure do appreciate it. And, and gal. Thank you. Thank you. And gal. <laughs> lovely gal. Smoke often, smoke happy, and have a safe and pleasant new year. Happy new year, everybody. Ciao for now. Yes. Have a happy new year. Uh, and as everybody else said, be very, very safe. And um, goodbye. Don't forget to go to the website. Send in your pictures. cccigars.com. That's, That's double ccigars.com.